Are you ready for the word? Praising. This is Pastor Pearson of Word of Faith Christian Center here in sunny San Antonio, Texas. A Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church where Jesus Christ is Lord and you'll never be bored. We want to welcome all of you back to our broadcast and I pray it's being a blessing to you and yours. So sit back and relax as I bring a message from the Word of God just for you. But please, please, please have an ear to hear what the Lord is about to say. Because if you do, I guarantee you that you're going to be blessed today. So without further ado, let me bring today's message to you. But before I do, I've got a question to ask you. Are you ready for the word? Because ready or not, here it comes. There is what he's talking about. The arm of the Lord won't be revealed, but it'll stay covered. You'll never see how powerful it is. You'll never see how powerful it is because his arm will stay covered. I want it uncovered. I don't know about you. Mark chapter 6, he wants to show off in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's a second witness that doubt and unbelief stopped the manifestation of the miracles of God intended um, for the people to be able to receive. We start reading verse 5 this time, Mark chapter 6, verse 5, and it says, And he could there, there go that there again, he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk. And healed them. He said, and he laid his hand upon a few sick folk and healed them. Well, this must have been a different place right here. Because that place else he went, multitudes of sick folk was brought to him. That place else, multitudes of sick folk came to him. Everywhere he went, multitudes follow him till he get here. There ain't but a few. Why is that? Doubt and unbelief is there. It's where there's, there's doubt and unbelief. There's no expectations of manifestation. There's no expectations of manifestation. I'm so glad that that don't happen up in here. Shed that at both sides. We be checking people at the door. Hallelujah. Patting them down. See if we find doubt and unbelief. Praise God. <laughs> Can't carry that up in here, man. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we got manifestations of uh, expectations of manifestations of God doing things. Amen. We come in with expectations. We wake up with expectations. We go to sleep with expectations. We dream about our expectations of manifestations. People be coming in and say, Pastor, let me tell you what I dream. I say, I know, I know. It's something that you expect. And praise God. Nigga. I saw, God will get you showing you stuff too. I saw, I saw the land of the Lord. They get to describe and I'll be like, see, see, you plugged in, baby, you plugged in. Because God's trying to raise the number of people that have an expectation so he can show off and bam, cause a manifestation just like that. That's too long. He said he can only do it only to a few people. Let's read it again, verse five. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. And he could there do no mighty work save that he had laid his hands upon a few sick people and he healed them. I like how he said them. He healed them. The other ones didn't. Them is the one he healed. Now that word few right there means puny. It does. It means puny. That's puny in extent, puny in degree, puny in number, puny in duration, and puny in value. He said he could just do a, 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 a puny. Because of their unbelief, Jesus could only manifest a few puny things. This is his estimation. Puny in extent, I said. Which means he could have been able to do more. But they didn't believe. He could have did more. But he didn't believe. Imagine for you, praise God. You know, you come down, you came to a person and they said, what can I do for you? You said, well, tell you what I, I need. I, need I, just, I just need to get caught up on my bill. My light bill behind. He said, that's what you want me to do? He said, yeah. He said, go get that done. Make that hand up for Get that light bill up to date. How much do you need to get back up to date? They said, well, you know, I need this much. It's okay. Get it up to date. Okay, cool. And in his mind, he's thinking, that was puny. I want to pay it off from now on. But that's all you asked me for. I did what you asked me. Go ahead. It was puny. I need my I need I need my rent paid. Sure. Yeah. How much your rent? Total. 
take care of it. They walk away. Woo! Woo! This mighty manifestation. God said, no, that was puny. Because I wanted to pay you up to date on that place, pull you out of that place, and give you your own place. That's what I wanted to do. But you only asked me for that. So that's all I did. So look at somebody say, puny no more. Puny no more. It also means puny in degree. Puny in degree. See, Jesus could have done things to a higher degree. But he couldn't because of their unbelief. He could have did it to a higher degree. They could have been believing God for a car. When he came to them, found out that that's what they was believing for. He opened the door for them to get a new car. They accepted the loan. Because <laughs> previously it couldn't be accepted. Before it was, it was, it was, it was, it was uh, um, denied, denied, denied. But this time it was approved, approved, approved. And they walked away with a nice, you know, model car. Praise God. And, you know, with the ability to be able to pay for it, you know, incrementally. And they came and shouted about it. God said, that was actually puny. Because I was going to give you a car. Paid for it. But you really didn't believe that. All you believed, you were satisfied if I can just get you somebody to go ahead and accept your credit. So that's what I did. Puny. Somebody say puny. puny. Look at your neighbor and say, but puny no more. That was also puny in duration, puny in duration, which means he could have done things for a longer period of time. But their unbelief limited how long he could let his manifestation, the, 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 his miraculous power flow because he wants to do more. That happens up in here sometimes, praise God. I can feel the power of God. It's like just beginning. It's almost like my hand starts dripping. Praise God. I can feel it coming. I can just, you see, come on, lady. Y'all been pregnant. Pregnant lady. Anybody here been pregnant? Any ladies ever been here pregnant? No man, raise your hand, please. Praise God. Any lady in here ever been pregnant? Praise God. Hallelujah. You can feel when things begin to load up. It's, it's real close to the time when feeding time is. Things just begin to load up. Your stuff get heavy. Praise God. Why? Because preparation is there for whatever that child needs. So that the child don't get halfway through and be like, dang, that's it? It's got more than enough sitting up in there. Are you listening to me up in here? Hallelujah. Well, you can feel when God wants to do more. He wants to do more. He'll manifest in the middle of the place. And he'll be like, I just want to occupy the place. I just want to sit down here for, can I sit down for a little while? For believe, yeah, sure, as long as you finish the service by this time. So I can go back to run, run, run back to my little half butt life and do little half butt things, praise God, rather than let you do the full thing that you want to do. Amen. Say what? And so what he do is lift. And just say, well, okay. That's all you wanted? You just want a little tickle? You just want a little goosebump? You just wanted a little, you know, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. You got it. I'll lift now. Let you go back to your reruns on TV. Watching your reruns of rerun. Do, 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 do. Because <laughs> he wanted to stay for a longer period of time. Guys, I just want to settle down in your life and just manifest Sometimes a rain shower will come through and it'll drop some rain and we'll be excited about it. But sometimes it'll cloud will come and stay and it won't move. And it just rains and rains and rains and rains and rains and rain. God said, that's what I want to do in your life. I just want to rain and rain and rain and rain and rain my power in your life. Just saturate you and soak your life with the greatness of who I am. But because of their unbelief, he can only do, be there for a little while. Puny also in value. See, the miraculous power that Jesus made available to them could have manifested higher value miracles for them. Higher value as in more impactful, impactful miracles. You know, like hearing impaired people, hearing, blind eyes opening, hemesis, lame folk walking. Praise God. God said, I want to do some, some high value stuff. I want to bring that crackhead kids of yours back. Clean. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Ready to do what God said do. 
to the point you got to run to keep up with them. That's what I want to do. God wants to do some high value stuff. Stuff that everybody look at and be like, now that was God flat out right there. That's stuff where people come from the city and just say, I heard you preach on that radio station you just went on. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I heard you talking about the land of the Lord. And when you spoke that, God spoke to me and said, that land that you've been protecting, give it to them. Go make a deal with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then we give them a ridiculous amount to see if it's really God. Just a retarded amount. Three bubble gums and a soda pop. <laughs> and they be like, here you go. Deal. Guys, I want to do some high impact stuff. But I couldn't because of their unbelief. Verse 6. And he marveled because of their unbelief. What did he do? He marveled because of their unbelief. That word marvel means wondered. A question mark popped over here. A bunch of question marks. Boop, 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 boop. All over his head. He just in there like. And he marveled at their unbelief. <laughs> this is deep right there. I got might as well go here. By implication, I didn't I didn't give it to them, but I know it already. By implication, that word marvel right there means admired their unbelief. Now, when I say impressed or admired, I'm not meaning it from the angle that he's like, man, that's great you got that. He's more so saying it from an angle, I ain't never seen nothing like this before. I'm marvel. I've never seen doubt and unbelief like this before. There was only two times in scripture that the Lord Jesus marveled over anything. One time was because of the faith of a Gentile. And the other time is, is this time because of the unbelief of the Jews. Now you think about what I just said. One time was the faith of a Gentile. And the second time was the unbelief of the Jews. Both times Jesus stood there with his mouth open. So I ain't never seen nothing like this before. Because... <laughs> Jesus marveled because the faith of a person who is not even one of his people, a person who is not even in the covenant with him, therefore shouldn't, should be the least likely to believe him. But he believed him the strongest to the point that he said, hey, G, don't even come to my house. Just speak the word only. It'll happen. He said, oh, see, snap. I ain't never seen nothing like that. You ain't even in covenant with me, man. You don't even, you don't even serve me. You don't worship me. You don't, you, somebody told you about me. And then you saw me a few times, saw what I did and said, well, I know that you're going to be able to heal mine. Jesus, I ain't never seen nothing like this before. And Jesus also marveled because of the unbelief of a people. A people who are his. A people who are in covenant with him. Therefore, they should be the people who should be the most likely to believe him, but they didn't. That's why he marveled. He like, you don't believe me? If anybody should know I'm the Messiah, y'all should. I grew up with you. You know, if anybody believe me, should believe me, it should be you. I saved you. I already healed you. I've already provided for you a little something, something from time to time. I came through for you every time. And you choking over what I'm saying to you? You don't even bring me your situations or your problems. You try to handle them and do it all like it's you? Because you really don't believe I'll do this for you? I'm marveling over your unbelief. Two times in history when a Gentile had faith and when a believer didn't have faith. Blew his left mind. But go back to verse 5. We're almost through. He said in verse 5, And he could there do no mighty works, save that he laid his hand upon a few sick folk and healed them. But he could no. Notice the scripture said he could do no mighty works. Not would do no mighty works. Could do. No mighty works. Not would do. No mighty works. Could not and would not are two different things. Could not means not capable. But he was capable. 
But would not means chose not. Could not means was not capable. Would not means chose not. Could not infers that even if he wanted to, he couldn't do it. But would not infers that even if they wanted him to do it, he would choose not to do it. So it wasn't that Jesus wouldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Why? Because they wouldn't let him. Our, fa- our doubt and unbelief hinders his ability to do what he can do. It hinders his ability. Imagine, praise. I remember, I'm, I'm going to give you testimony, praise God. I remember, I remember I played on this one team. I was new to this team, praise God. And they had all these, I understand, because I was coach too, you know, but this before I was coach. They had all these players on this team that been with this guy for a long time, but they ain't never won nothing. They ain't never, they ain't never did nothing. They win a game or two, but, you know, it was more it was almost like a social thing. I got on the squad. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I only like to win. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in nothing else. I really, really, really don't. I don't believe in nothing else but winning. I found out I was designed to win. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Which means if you walk in faith every day of your life, you'll win in everything that goes on in your life. I'm designed to win. Are you listening to me up in here? Shout out to the But Anyway, I got on this one team, man. They had me on the bench. I'm sitting back on the bench watching these scrubs getting the ball took from them because they was playing point guard. Watching this. They, 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 they don't know when to pass. They don't know when to shoot. They messing up and we losing. We was down like about 20. And I just got, I mean, I mean, I, I couldn't take it no more. One time I just stood, I just sat there. He called time out and he got ready to put this scrub scrub in while I was still on this bench. And I said, hey man, that's it. I'm out, man. I'm out. I'm sitting, I'm, and they're like, no, how right up? No, no, man. I'm out, man. <laughs> I can't sit here and sit here and watch y'all destroy this game like this. And when I went into the locker room, Trey's guy, you know, the assistant coach, not the coach, the assistant coach came back. He said, hey, man, come on back, come on back. We're going to put you in. And I'm like, man, forget it now. He said, no, man, just, just, we'll just finish this game out. Put, put us in. Show, show the coach that he was wrong. I said, that ain't nothing but a word. Start putting my stuff back on, praise God. Went over, went in the game. I think I bust about 35 on them that day and stuff like that in a quarter. Let's go. I ain't going to tell you how many dimes I dropped and how many and stuff like that, praise God. I mean, we, I mean, we turned that thing around from getting blowed out to blowing the team out and stuff like that. And then the coach turned around and said, man, I was wrong about you. I said, more wrong than you think. See you later. I just wanted to show you what I could do. I'm out. I'm about to go get on the other squad. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sitting on your bench, scrub. <laughs> I'm back. I'm trying to come back. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because I knew I had the ability. I knew I could turn this game around. I, I'm sitting there watching them throw the game away. How you think Jesus feels sitting there watching you throw your life away? Wasting another month. Wasting another year. Wasting another day. When he said, I got the ability, but you let me do puny stuff. Just let me get high fives to him when, when the scrubs come back to the bench. Man, I'm, I, got, I got more ability than that, man. Just let me in the game. You'll see. They could do no body work. They wouldn't let him. One guy said, man, dang, he could have he been doing this all the time. I heard him say it to another brother. I said, yes, I could have. Every game. Could have been blowing these suckers out. But I'm sitting on the bench. Ain't even breaking a sweat. (laughs) And that's where God is too. He in our life. Praise God, he's in our life. But he can't do nothing. Not because of his ability. Is you won't bring him in the game. Jesus wanted to do mighty work for them. That's why he showed up. I bet you he's going, I'm on my way home, man. I know I'm going to bust this up. I'm going home, praise God, glory to God. I get to, tell, I get to go see little, little Jimmy and Johnny and all them and, and, and Miss Smith down there. I can be able to turn their whole life around. And they get there and like, hey, G, hey, G. You want me to do anything for you? 
Oh, no, no, we cool. We got it. We got it. Why they tearing up everything? We got it. Down five. We cool. Down 10. Okay, we don't need you. Down 15. Down 25. I'm so- Ugh. I, I'm out. That's what he did. He said, I'm out. <laughs> he struck on his way by. He saw a couple of people like, yeah, here, take that. Go tell them what I did. Here, take that. Go tell them what I did. God could have said, I could have stayed longer. I could have did greater things in extent. I could have did greater things in value. I could have did some, I could have did some stuff where you could have been the millionaire ministers of the billionaire church by now. But you won't let me. But you won't let me. I'll never forget. I got to get this. I got to get this one example. Can I do it? Since I went there, I'm, I got to get this one example. Man, I'm through. I'm, I'm for real. I'm through. I, I remember, praise God, when the Lord first gave me that word, praise God, about the millionaire ministers in the billionaire church, praise God. And I got up to the congregation, I preached it to him. I said, man, guess what God said? God said that he was going to make some millionaires up here. Some going to be brought, some going to be taught. Praise God. I remember he had two people. We was in prayer, middle of prayer, praise God. He had one person stand on one side. They represented the ones that was going be, to be taught. And then there was one standing on one side, and they represented the one that was going to be taught. They stood on that side. And the power of God released, and both of them dropped to the ground, praise God. And then God prophesied over the entire congregation and said this is what he was going to do. He was going to make millionaires up in there, praise God. But I remember, I remember, I remember, you know, everybody was like, oh, glory, glory, you know. But nobody do nothing, praise God. Hallelujah, but, you know, but, oh, you know, you know, but nobody did nothing, praise God. And I remember, I remember, we, I was in prayer. I remember I was in prayer, praise God, on, a, on, on one of them Saturday morning prayers. That's when we had it on Saturdays then, only. And I was sitting there and praying. And then this lady come up to me after prayer, praise God. And she asked me, she said, I told my daughter about what you're doing. Her daughter wasn't a member of the church. She said, I told my daughter about what, you know, God said to you up in here. And he wanted you to say, could you pray for his church? Uh, I mean, her business too. And I got ready to open my mouth to say no. Because God told me, do this for the people in the church. Yes, God. And I was about to say no. And I said, pray for her. I'm like, hey, you in charge, praise God. And so I said, well, yeah, what's your daughter's business name? And she told her the business was floundering, wasn't doing good. Long story short, I prayed for a business, praise God. Hallelujah, right there. I don't want to elaborate this story, but let's just make it a couple months later. I don't think it was that long. Couple, I'm going to make it a, let's make it three months later. Three, four months. It wasn't nowhere near that long. But I'm going to just do that for, make sure we get it in there so you don't be thinking I'm lying. About three, four months later, the lady came back to me. She said, remember when you prayed for my daughter's business? She said, yeah, she said, my daughter faxed this to me and told me to show it to you. She said she just came from her accountant and her accountant. And she said, read that, please. And I read it. And she said that your net, her net worth now was over a million dollars. She said she has now become a millionaire. She's a millionaire now. And she told me she wanted me to thank you and let you know that the prayers work and stuff like that. And I was like, praise God for it. Praise God. And then, and then, and then, and then the lady came to visit. I shouldn't say this part, but I got to, praise God. The lady came to visit, too, praise God. You know, she came, come in. She said, this is my daughter right here. I said, hey, how you doing? She had a little package for me and stuff like that. And then she handed me an envelope and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, that's so sweet, you know. She said, remember that? I, I was, she said, my business was floundering. I was broke. She said, but you prayed and the miraculous power manifested and I'm a, now I'm a millionaire. I mean, my pastor, he's so happy because I'm, I'm tithing off of this million and stuff like that and millions are coming through the door. And she said, I got a gift for you too. And I said, well, thank you, man. And then when she left, praise God, I opened up, it was a cute little box of chocolate, praise God, and, 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 and a check for $25, praise God. And I was like, praise God, you know. Y'all, y'all already where I was. Praise God. Praise God. The Lord spoke to me. He said, now tell your congregation what just happened. He said, because the reason why I had you pray for her is because they don't believe I can do what I said I could do. So I had you pray for her so that you can use her as an example of how quick I could do this thing if they just believe what I said. He said, now go tell them what I said. So I said, I'm doing he, no, this would what he added in. He said, tell him, I said, if you don't want me to do it for you, I'll do it for somebody else. Because I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. 
I would have loved that money to come in here, though. So I went I got up and told him, praise God. It don't take God long to do what he want to do. God wants to do things in more extent. He wants to increase what he wants to do. All he has to do is find a few that believe what he said. She believed that it was going to happen. Put her hand to the plow. And God then got behind it and began to start doing what he said he would do. And then, boom, she just blew up just like that. What are you believing for? Some of y'all believing for healings in your body. God can do it. Some of you believing for healing in your relationships. God can do it. Hallelujah. But do you believe it? Well, that's all that we have time for today. We trust that you were blessed by what the Word of God had to say. Call a neighbor, call a friend, tell them to tune in. But when you do, know that we're going to ask the same question of you. That is, are you ready for the Word? Y'all stay blessed.